Hi, this is Steve, K8BZ. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to use N3FJP's amateur contact log to uh, log network operations. And there are a few special considerations uh, we need to be aware of. Uh, it's very handy to use the rig interface so you don't have to manually enter frequencies and modes. Uh, this will also look up call signs for US calls when we use the N3FJP uh, call sign database that's available for free download that can be resident in your uh, computer. Uh, another important feature is when you have VHF nets that utilize repeaters and how you have to deal with those when if you upload to Logbook of the World. And we're, we're going to cover all that in this vi video. Uh, first, uh, we're going to talk about VHF nets. I'm sorry, HF nets. Uh, as you can see, I have the rig interface uh, interfaced with the HF radio. Uh, if, if you remember from a previous video, uh, there you can have more than one radio interfaced with your log. You can save those settings and you switch between the radios by holding control and pressing X. So by doing so, as you can see, I switched to the other, second radio that settings are saved that's on uh, two meters. Let's go back to HF. So we're back on HF. Uh, let's say, for example, we have a net on, uh, yeah, let's go up here to a sideband frequency. Now, I'm not going to actually transmit anything. I'm just going to make up a net uh, operation here. So we're going to go up here and click the net option in the menu bar. And it's going to bring up the net and roundtable manager. There is a shortcut for that. That's Control M. Uh, let's do that using Control M. So we're just we're just going to close this, do a Control M, and that should bring up the same window. Now over here you can put in the net name, and let's just make up a name. Uh, well, let's call it the. Uh, Groundbreakers net. Now it's automatically going to read the date uh, from your PC clock. It's automatically going to read the band mode and frequency from your rig interface, but uh, you might want to manually put in the power. Uh, we'll put in 100 watts. This will save whatever power setting you last entered. Uh, on HF, uh, we may be running 100 watts. So if you're either the net control or just a check in on the net, uh, let's say, first of all, you're the net control station and you start calling calling for check-ins. I'm just going to put in some uh, local call signs here. Uh, let's say K8EO checked in. I'm going to do that and press enter. And it's going to look up his name and address and fill in these fields. If you want, you can later go in and put in signal reports. Over here on the address field, uh, again, it's reading this from the uh, uh, resident uh, N3FJP call sign database for US and Canadian calls that you can download for free and interface for free. That was described also in a previous video. Uh, let's say our next check in is WHCOP. Uh, and you can just go ahead and enter the call signs as they check in. Um, well, let's see here. K A E O. W8CSX is another local. So you just keep entering entering the uh, check-ins. Uh, you can go over and log them individually here if you want. You can delete them individually in this column. When you're all done, if you click Save and Close, now it's going to close that. And it'll take it a minute here, but it'll populate your, your log with those contacts. There we go, and it did. And if we open one of them individually, uh, it will give you the information on that contact. If you put in signal reports, it would uh, save those also. Now, this was just an example. We didn't make any contact with these people, so I'm gonna select them all and delete all of them so they won't be in the log. Okay, now that the uh, first net uh, contacts that we logged uh, have been deleted from the log. Now we'll talk about VHF nets. Let's go back to the net tab. 
if the VHF net is different, you just type in the name. Let's just call this the ARES net. And whoop, let me let me back out of this. We're actually going to uh, do a control X. We're going to switch over to the VHF radio. Uh, the second radio interfaced with the log program. You'll see now we're on two meters FM and this is a two meter repeater frequency. So let's go to the net logging feature. So it's going to be the ARES net. It automatically reads the frequency. The power now is not 100 watts, it's 40 watts. And again, we're just going to put in some local call signs WHCOP, WHCSX, K8. ADO, and we've logged all of these uh, in our VHF net that we have using a repeater. Now, so we're going to save and close here. That's going to add those three contacts to our log. And again, it takes just a few seconds to do that. Okay, so here are the contacts. Now, all of these were made using repeaters. Uh, if you only get one thing out of this video, let this be what you get. If you upload to Logbook of the World, this will upload these contacts to Logbook of the World, but it will consider those as simplex contacts that are eligible for credit for ARRL awards. And repeater contacts are not eligible for credit. So what needs to be done. It's okay to log these. There's nothing in, in the world wrong with logging these, but these cannot be uploaded to Logbook of the World like this. The way that's corrected is by using this field down here called Prop Mode. Okay, there are certain prop modes in an ADIF file uh, that, are, that can be identified, and some prop modes are uploadable to logbook of the world. Uh, one prop mode is satellite, for example. Uh, you can upload satellite contacts to logbook of the world and they account for credit for satellite awards like satellite worked all states, satellite VUCC. So uh, those technically a satellite is in most cases a repeater, can be considered a repeater, but it's not a terrestrial rep repeater, it's a space satellite. Terrestrial repeaters or internet assisted contacts do not count for awards. So those should not be uploaded. If you open one of these contacts down here in prop mode, you can put RPT. Okay, now if I, if I open this back up, you'll see RPT in the prop mode. Now let's do that on all three of these. RPT, Prop mode here, RPT. Prop mode on this next one. RPT. Now this takes some effort. Uh, let's say if you have a large VHF net that you hold on a repeater and there are 25 or 30 check-ins, you need to put, if you're going to upload to Logbook of the World, you need to put RPT for the propagation mode. Uh, while we're at it, let's take a look at what other propagation modes are since we're on the subject. I have a file in here where I have propagation modes. Let's see. Prop modes, there it is. And we'll take a look at these. These are, these are the valid propagation modes that you can enter uh, and they become part of the ADIF file for that contact. Uh, propagation modes such as Aurora, uh, Aurora E, Backscatter, Echo Link. Echo Link is a propagation mode. Uh, Earth Moon Earth or Moon Bounce is a propagation mode. That's another one that's that's valid to upload for uh, for EME awards. Uh, Internet assisted. Uh, Trans Equatorial is a propagation mode. Uh, Tropospheric ducking, satellite is a propagation mode, rain scatter, uh, repeater assisted, terrestrial or atmospheric repeater or transponder. Uh, now there's a difference between that and satellite. Don't confuse that with satellite. Uh, those are a different propagation mode that are valid uploads. Here's the SAT propagation mode. Now you have to use the abbreviation over here. This is the 
plain language description. So if you're going to log nets, I'm going to scroll over here to the right and prop mode should be in one of these columns if I'm not mistaken. There it is, prop mode, repeater. Okay, now uh, all of the rest of these, let's go to as if we're going to do an upload to Logbook of the World. So we're going to go to eLogs, L-O-T-W, and we're just going to say upload all contacts not previously uploaded. We can do that. And then it's going to give you this notice here, invalid prop mode. You cannot upload that and it won't let you upload it. So you can click ignore. So it uploaded everything except those contacts that were designated as uh, prop mode of repeater. Uh, please make note of that. If you're going to upload to Logbook of the World, if you're going to log repeater assisted contacts, make sure that you put prop mode repeater in there. Now this prop mode field doesn't show up on the generic form. You have to set it to show up on the log form. But let's go into settings and we're going to go down here to edit fields displayed position and tab order. Now when you do this it's not going to let you display it because uh, it has the uh, uh, the DX spotting enabled so but I'm going to do it anyways to show you what happens. We're going to click that and it's going to say you can't do that unless you disable DX spotting. So we're going to go back in here to settings go down to DX spotting and we're going to uncheck this box that says enable DX spotting. So the DX spots are now removed from the bottom of the log form. Now if we go here to edit fields displayed, it will give you these options. And over here are the instructions. The tab order will be in the order they're listed here on the display for the fields that are enabled. Now not all of them are enabled. Uh, or if or visible on the main form. Uh, for example, if I click mode, it's going to show you here that it's visible on the main form. If I uncheck that, it's going to take mode off the main form. Let's take a look. See, now where the mode used to be displayed, there's just a blank spot there. Let's go back to edit fields displayed. Back to mode. Date band mode is disabled. We're going to make it visible on the main form again. And we're going to show that it's that it shows up back on the main form. Now let's go all the way down here to prop mode. And it fields displayed and we have to scroll down to find it but you will see prop mode here and it's enabled so it's displayed on the main form. Now this, this is important for satellite operators to know also. If you are a satellite operator and want to use Logbook of the World to qualify for satellite awards, you're going to have to make sure that the sat name is something that's going to show up. So ARISS for the space station can be a field that displays. So we need to make sure that prop mode is, is something that's displayed on the main log form if you're going to log repeater assisted contacts and if you upload to Logbook of the World. If you don't upload to Logbook of the World, don't worry about it. You don't need to put it in, but I highly recommend that you do anyways. Let's say you are keeping a log for 10 years and all of a sudden you decide you want to upload your whole log to Logbook of the World. You don't have to go back through there and try to identify which ones were uh, repeater assisted contacts to put in the prop mode. Uh, the only contacts that I actually enter a prop mode for are satellite contacts and repeater assisted contacts. And I don't log all repeater assisted contacts, but some of them I do. Uh, but I just make sure that I have the prop mode of RPT in for the repeater assisted contacts. Okay, so let's clear that. Let's go back up here and select these contacts that we used for an example, and we are going to delete them all because we don't want them in our log. They're successfully deleted. Now this this window here will just tell you it's, it's going to renumber the contacts so your numbers don't get all out of sequence. I like my numbers to make sense, so the number record number over here actually shows the number of contacts in the log. Now to to correct to this numbering for these contacts that were deleted, I have 99,000 contacts in the log. That takes a period of time to do that. 
you'll see the progress bar here moves fairly slowly, so I'm not going to uh, sit here and record all of that. So we'll, we'll pause and pick it up uh, at the end of that uh, delete process. Okay, we are just about to the end of the deletion. You can see the progress bar here is nearing the end, so it's going to renumber all of these, make sure the numbering is correct for the record numbers. And then it will re-display your log. A couple of other points I want to make before I close this video out, and they're uh, right along the same line of being careful about what you upload to Logbook of the World for repeater assisted contacts. There are more than just the traditional FM repeater assisted contacts. Nowadays with uh, digital uh, radio features that use internet assisted contacts like uh, Wires X uh, from Yesu or uh, I'm sorry uh, from ICOM System Fusion with Yesu radios C4FM is a valid digital mode, uh, and as a matter of fact, if you look on the mode list here, you should find, there it is, C4FM. So you can you can put, uh, it, it didn't stay in there because my rig interface reads the, the mode of the radio, but you can use C4FM as a valid digital mode as long as, uh, and it can be uploaded to Logbook of the World, as long as you're not using the Wires X feature that's internet assisted. So you may have a simplex digital contact using digital mode, Yezu's digital mode C4FM. That's a direct simplex contact without the aid of Wires X or, or a, a System Fusion repeater. So that's one valid contact in a digital mode that can be uploaded. But if you're using a digital repeater for that contact or you're using Wires X that's an internet assisted one, Make sure that you fill in the prop mode category, and this is this is quite important actually. Uh, if you have, let's say, you have uh, Wires X installed, and you're using Wires X to log into a room in Japan, for example, you can have many contacts with someone in Japan, and there's no radio involved at all. It's all over the internet, even though you're using your hand mic on your Yezu radio to have that contact. So. It is very important to understand that. that it is important to maintain the integrity of these awards. Uh, there are many, many people that spend many years qualifying for some of the higher levels of these awards. And if they, if the integrity of these awards become tarnished through the use of digital, uh, not digital, but internet assisted or repeater assisted contacts that aren't part of the process for those, then uh, it really uh, uh, defeats the purpose of these awards. So we need to maintain the integrity of those. So we're going to go back to DX spotting, re-enable our DX spotting, and our log is all back to normal. We had our example QSOs deleted from the log. We didn't upload anything to Logbook of the World. I'm going to do a Control X, go back to Control, switched over to the HF radio. And that kind of wraps up net logging, uh, kind of paralleled uh, a little bit about logging, uh, uploading to Logbook of the World, and being careful about what you upload. Make sure you include prop mode if there, if there are contacts that are not eligible to be uploaded. So thanks for watching. And as always, uh, if you have any questions or problems, feel free to comment below and I'll respond. Or you can email me at k8bz at arrl.net. Thank you.